Good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, James Oldfield here with you on A Word from the Lord. This is Sunday, November the 5th, and we are glad that you're with us. This is a live call-in program. If you'd like to be a part of this program, discuss Bible topics, our phone number is area code 336 427 9696. That's 427 9696 or 627 9563. That's 627 9563. And that's area code 336. Friends, this uh, a word from the Lord is, uh, like we said, it's a radio program brought to you by the Church of Christ that meets in Eden, 250 Boulevard. And we hope that you'll have uh, take the opportunity to come visit with us or set up a time where we can study the Bible with you. We'd be glad to do that. We hope to see you and hear from you. We like hearing from people who are listening to the program. Uh, some have followed us from, from, the, uh, from the television program and some are new and so we're glad you are listening to us and, <clears throat> and we're hearing from you. Um, we want to uh, let you know that we'd be glad to hear from you and uh, discuss the Bible with you. Today on A Word from the Lord, uh, this program, we're going to be discussing, uh, taking a look at Billy Graham. Billy Graham turns 99 years old this week, and so his birthday is being celebrated in a, in a great big way. We're going to be looking at uh, some of the things about Billy Graham's life. He's very much uh, revered, very celebrated uh, in many circles, I guess. Just, I guess, a home, uh, homegrown boy. I think he was born down in Raleigh, and so... Uh, uh, just uh, or maybe it's Charlotte. I can't remember somewhere Charlotte Raleigh somewhere in North Carolina. <laughs> but he's uh, uh, you know well known, very famous individual. So we're going to be dis discussing uh, some things about his life as uh, his birthday is approaching, and then we're going to uh, consider the question: Why do preachers need to be examined, and why do they need to be scrutinized? And so all of this is what we'll be discussing today on a word from the Lord. Again, if you'd like to be a part of this program, area code 336. That's area code 336, and the phone numbers are 427-9696, 427-WMYN, or 627-9563, 627-WLOE. And as I said, this is a word from the Lord, and my name is James Oldfield. My phone number is 276-340-2653 if you'd like to call me. On my cell phone sometime after the program, 276-340-2653. Be glad to uh, talk with you off the air. And as I said, I want to give you this content information uh, that we're uh, where we meet. We meet at 250 the Boulevard in Eden, North Carolina. And we meet Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible class and 10 a.m. for worship. Thursdays at 7 p.m. for Bible study. And uh, you can uh, reach me at a word from the Lord at gmail.com. A word from the Lord altogether. A word from the Lord at gmail.com. So we hope that you will take advantage of that. So so this program today, the lesson we're going to be discussing today, as I said, Billy Graham turns um, uh, 99 years old uh, this week. I saw a sign coming through Ridgeway. Uh, and it said Billy Graham Sunday. It's one of the little yard signs that said Billy Graham Sunday. And I was wondering, well, what's this all about, Billy Graham Sunday? And uh, I mean, I've heard of Billy Sunday, and I didn't know maybe that was maybe that was his middle name was Graham, but Billy Graham Sunday. So I just did a little research and digging into it, and found out well, his uh, Billy Graham, uh, his birthday is November the seventh. He's turning nine nine years old, and so uh, a lot of people are celebrating Billy Graham. Uh, some of the things you might not have known about the Billy Graham, I want to just give you some information about him before we go any further. I want you to consider Billy Graham, uh, he's a, um, like I said, he's been very instrumental, very, very popular, well-known uh, individual, evangelical Christian, I guess, Southern Baptist. Uh, he was uh, born on November the 7th, uh, 1918, Southern Baptist minister. Uh, sort of a celebrity, if you will. He's been uh, he's been called the uh, preacher for the presidents, I believe. He's uh, he's advised, uh, like a, I guess you might say, so-called spiritual advisor to Dwight D. Eisenhower, uh, Lyndon Johnson, Richard Nixon. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's probably uh, had audience with every preacher, at least since Eisenhower, and. Uh, 
So there's no doubt about it that he has a lot of sway, a lot of influence, a lot of pull. Um, something about uh, Billy Graham, he's um, probably well known for these large uh, rallies, you know, revival, so-called revivals, the Crusades. Uh, for six decades um, of television, he was known for the Billy Graham Crusades, which he began, I think, in 19... 47 uh, until 2005 when he stopped doing those things. Uh, he hosted a radio program called The Hour Decision from 1950 to 1954. Uh, he uh, so-called, he supposedly preached to live audiences of nearly 215 million people in more than 185 countries and territories during these uh, different uh, uh, meetings. So no doubt about it. I mean, here's a here's a man that has touched a lot of lives, a lot of influence, and and you know, friends, this is pretty amazing when you when you think about it uh, from from the standpoint of just the influence that that a man has, and really, in a way, how scary it is. I mean, when you're talking about reaching 215 million people, I mean, just that alone, that's that's going to be a, a great accounting. Uh, you have to give a great accounting for that on the day of judgment. So, uh, no doubt about it, Billy Graham is, is, you know, he swings a wide loop, you might say. He has a lot of influence or had a lot of influence, especially in the in the prime of his life. Uh, Billy Graham has, uh, he's probably, I guess, dappled in all kinds of different media, publishing outlets. Um, according to his staff, more than, 3.2 million people have responded to the invitation at Billy Graham Crusades to, quote, accept Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. Um, as of 2008, Graham's estimated lifetime audience, including radio and television broadcast, topped 2.2 billion. Uh, during his crusades, Graham has preached the gospel to more people in person than anyone in history of Christianity. That's what... Um, one source says, I don't, I don't, I take that with a grain of salt, don't know if that's the case or not, but anyway, I mean, wow, 2.2 billion more people, that's, 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 a, that's a large number. And as I said, friends, this is why uh, Billy Graham is so, so popular, so, so well known. A lot of people look up to Billy Graham. He's appeared uh, on the, the list of most admired men and women uh, 60 times since 1955. Uh, so, uh, uh, he's just, uh, you know, just, I don't know, I don't know of any person that probably is more well known in our generation than Billy Graham. He's, he's been all over the place and he's talked to so many people and been in so many countries. But here's the thing, just because someone is well known and just because he's had great, a lot of revival meetings and crusades and things like that, does that mean that he's right? You know, popularity is not a is not a uh, standard by which you uh, judge if someone is right or wrong. And so, while Billy Graham, I guess he, uh, uh, you know, he has a lot of popularity, and he uh, rightly so from the standpoint, just simply from the standpoint of everybody knows who he is. But that doesn't make it right, and that doesn't mean that he's right. Is he indeed a force for good? As people want to believe. Is he is what he's teaching, is it right? You know, the Bible says in first John two, uh excuse me, first John four and verse one, first John chapter four and verse one says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Now, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Uh, every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Now, friends, when you take those those verses, what John is saying, it doesn't mean that simply because someone confesses that Jesus Christ is uh, of God, that doesn't mean that they're right. They're saying something that came from God, but there's a lot of individuals that will confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And so that does not, in and of itself, make it true. Billy Graham, if we're looking at his life and you're looking at all the millions and, let's say, billions of people that he's taught, or have heard his voice, does that mean that he is above being scrutinized, that his, that his teaching is, is above being scrutinized? And uh, Acts 17, in verse 11, you have individuals that were 
that were told, that were considered to be more noble because what they did, they received the word with all readiness of mind, but they searched the scriptures daily where those things were so. Those were the Bereans in Acts 17 verse 11. And so, is Billy Graham, with all his popularity, 99 years old on, uh, I believe, I guess, uh, Tuesday, I guess, November the 7th, is, is he really someone that's to be celebrated? Is he celebrated as someone that has uh, been doing good all of his life? Or is he someone that maybe we should stop and consider maybe we should not be uh, praising men that do evil? Is that is that really what we are? So I uh, want to consider that as we move on into the program. Again, let me take the time to give you our phone numbers if you'd like to be a part of this program. There you go, 336-427-9696. That's 427-WMYN. Or 336-627-9563. 627-WLOE. So uh, Billy Graham, you know, is he... Is he <laughs> Should we be celebrating his life, or should we be uh, concerned about all that he's done? Now, one of the things I want to play for you as we move on into to looking at Billy Graham, as people are celebrating his life, and um, I'm sure there's a lot of people today that have been honoring him, giving him honor. Uh, let's just see if that's really honor that's worth due. Jesus and uh, Jesus said, you know, render to Caesar that which is Caesar. Paul said... Uh, you know, that we ought to honor those that, that deserve honor. But is Billy Graham someone that we should be honoring as a, as a great evangelist and great uh, promoter and proclaimer of the gospel? Is that is that really who he is? Now, you have probably have heard his comments uh, to Robert Schuller on the Hour of Power. Uh, this was in uh, 1997. It's when he made these comments. And I'm going to play this video for you. Because I said I'm, I'm, I know I've played it for you here before, but I want you to listen to what he says <clears throat> to Robert Shooter, and again this is in 1997, and uh, listen carefully to what he's saying, and then you just be the judge. Let's let's just go from there. Be the judge of his if he's someone that needs to be uh, praised, or is he someone that's maybe leading people astray? That's really what we're uh, what we're dealing with here. Is Billy Graham? Uh, someone that we should be looking up to or or praising, even even though, or just because he's he's not years old. What do you think is the future of Christianity? I think everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious of it or not, I think everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious of it or not, they're members of the body of Christ. And that's what God is doing today. He's calling people for, out of the, the world for his name, whether they come from the Muslim world or the Buddhist world or the Christian world or the non-believing world. Uh, they are members of the body of Christ because they've been called by God. They may not even know the name of Jesus, but uh, they know in their heart that they need something that they don't have and they turn to the only light that they have. And I think that they are saved and that they're going to be with us in heaven. This is fantastic. I'm so thrilled to hear you say that. There is a wideness in God's mercy. There is. There definitely All right, now, so Robert Shooter, Shooter says there's, uh, there's a wideness to God's mercy. So the, the, the things that Billy Graham said in this, in this uh, uh, interview or discussion he's having with Robert Shooter, I just can't imagine anyone uh, who hears this having still having a high regard for Billy Graham. Listen again to what he says. He says, I think everybody that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious of it or not. Now, friends, can you know, can you love somebody that you have no uh, idea that they even exist? I mean, how can you, how can you love somebody that you don't even know? And how can you love somebody and not know it? I mean, just think about that. I, you, he says anybody that loves Christ, whether they know it or not, that they are members of the body of Christ. Friends, that is not true. That's not true. The body of Christ is the Lord's church. In Colossians 1, let's just read, let's read what the scripture says. 
In Colossians 1 and verse 18, the Bible says that Christ is the head of the body, the church. Now, for Billy Graham to say that someone is a member of the body of Christ, even though they don't know it, is is just a dumbfounding. I mean, can you imagine some? You're a member of the body of Christ and you don't even know it. You don't even know who Christ is, but you're a member of the Lord's church. The Lord's church, the Lord's body, is not something that you just happen into. You surely don't just uh, stumble into it and you wake up and say, well, you know, I, I, I didn't realize it, but here I'm a member of the Lord's church for all this time. That's a lie. That's a devil's lie. And so for Billy Graham to say this, you think, well, man, he must be, you know, he must be uh, just, you know, losing his mind. But friends, this was 1997. This was 1997. Now he goes on to say, he says that God is calling people out of the world for his name, whether they come from the Muslim world or the Buddhist world or the Christian world or the non-believing world. Uh, they are members of the body of Christ because they've been called by God. Now friends, do Muslims believe that they are called by God to serve Christ? Do they believe that they have been called by God to become members of the body of Christ? Muslims don't even believe that Jesus is the Son of God. They think he's just a prophet. They don't believe he died on the cross. They don't believe that he was uh, that, that he died on the cross, so they don't believe that he rose again the third day. <clears throat> so how is it that God is calling Muslims, just for example, into a church that they don't even believe in, and that they're going to be in heaven. He, this is universalism, friends. This is saying that it doesn't matter what you believe, uh, uh, where you, your background, where you come from, doesn't matter what you believe, God is calling you in those religions. Do you believe that God is calling a Buddhist and that he can stay a Buddhist? Now, I know what the Bible says. The Bible says you're called by the gospel uh, in Second Thessalonians. Let's get our, our scripture up here, Second Thessalonians. 2 and verse 14, Paul says, Where until he called you by our gospel. Well, the gospel doesn't call people to become Buddhist, and it certainly doesn't call people to become Muslims. It calls people into the body of Christ to become Christians. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> excuse me, now, we just, let's just stop and just don't even, let's don't even go down the road of hyphenated Christians. Let's just keep it simple here. Do you believe that God is calling people into the body of Christ, and yet they're Muslims and Buddhists and so forth. I mean, this is this is this is crazy talk. And then he says, the uh, he says they may not even know the name of Jesus, but uh, they know in their hearts they need something that don't have, and they turn to the only light that they have. Friends, what is the only light that you have? Is that is that is that uh, some other light other than the gospel? Now, friends, I, I really have a hard time believing that anybody who promotes or is praising Billy Graham, who loves Billy Graham and looks at Billy Graham, looks up to him and idolizes him, that I just have a hard time believing that they would really... Um, sorry, I forgot to turn my phone down here. Let me just see what we got here. Uh, it's not going to... Uh, so, let's... Uh, I just have a hard time believing that anybody who uh, looks up to Billy Graham and hears this are going to be so um, still enamored with him. I just can't believe that they would take that, listen to it, and say, well, yeah, he's, he's, he's right on target. Friends, this is, this is so far from the truth, it's not even funny. I mean, even for uh, someone like Billy Graham, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about a Baptist preacher, right? I'm talking about a Baptist preacher who will tell people that you must believe in Christ, that you must uh, confess Christ or believe Christ. I mean, these are, these are basic uh, things that, that Baptists will tell you. Romans 10 and verse 14, How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And Billy Graham saying that they can be saved without any of those? Now, are you still going to be praising Billy Graham and being glad that he's done so much that uh, all through his life? Is he really praiseworthy? See? Now, when you, when you stay in Romans, I mean, Romans 10 
in verse 13 says, How, uh, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Billy Graham saying, you don't know the name of the Lord, and you can still be saved. I, I would think that every Southern Baptist would reject that wholeheartedly. And they ought to be, you know, really, they should have run Billy Graham out of the Southern Baptist Convention a long time ago, if that's what he's saying. And that seems to be what he's saying. I mean, what do you do with Acts 4 and verse 12? Look, Acts 4 and verse 12, everybody knows, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And Billy Graham just said, you don't even have to know the name. I'm saying, friends, this is, is this really someone that we should be praising? Is this really someone that should be uh, held in reverence and, and high regard? I mean, the Bible clearly says that the gospel is the light. In 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4, listen to what Paul says. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4, he says, If our gospel be hid, it is hid from them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Now, Billy Graham says, if they're blinded to the gospel light, then they can uh, be drawn to God by the Muslim light or the Buddhist light. Is there another light? Is there another light that, that we don't know about that can attract people? I mean, does a person get to choose which light they get to follow? I mean, is, you know, the only light you have is what Billy Graham says. Well, what if the only light you have is, uh, I don't know, what? What if, what if the only light you have is, uh, you know, a copy of the Humanist Manifesto? Is that is that good enough? What if the only light you have is, uh, you know, works by... Uh, Praising uh, the devil, you know, satanic worship, the occult. Is that is that light enough? It may not be as bright as the as the Buddhist light, but it's I guess according to Billy Graham, it's still light. See, friends, now this is what I'm trying to get you to realize: people are praising Billy Graham, and they're you know Billy Graham Sunday, and oh, he's 99 years old. Look what all he's done, friends. I had to wonder about this. Now, this is 1997 when he made this statement, and so. You know, somebody might be saying, well, he's, he's just slipping a little bit. I mean, after all, in 1997, he's, he's 79 years old. You know, I know we've probably got some, uh, quite a few elderly people listening in the audience tonight, so I'm not saying anything against you, but, I mean, let's face it, 80 years old, you, you mind not as quick as it used to be, not as sharp as it used to be, and so maybe Billy Graham was just slipping. Maybe he didn't really know what he was saying, and he was just kind of, you know, rambling a little bit. Let's just chalk it up to that. Someone might say, well, is that really, is that really what he was doing? Friends, I'm fixing to read you something from Billy Graham that I think that you probably haven't heard. You may have. You probably haven't heard it. Uh, that will, let's, let's just say, will help you determine whether Billy Graham was just a, you know, doddering old preacher or was he really saying something from the heart when he made that statement to Robert Schuler? And that's coming up next. First of all, I want to remind you of <clears throat> my email address, a word from the Lord at gmail.com. It's how you can reach me. If you'd like to have a Bible study or you have some questions that you want to ask, you can email me at a word from the Lord at gmail.com. And if you'd like to be a part of this program, uh, live program, the area code is 336 and the phone number is 427. 9696, that's 427-W-M-Y-N, or 627-9563-627-W-L-O-E. Uh, friends, it may be that you, maybe you went to a Billy Graham a crusade. I can't believe that there's no one in this general area within the sound of my voice that hasn't gone to a Billy Graham crusade. I just, I just have a hard time believing that. I mean, like I said, he, he was born, excuse me, he was born uh, in uh, Charlotte, I think I said Raleigh earlier, but he was born in in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, so I have a hard time believing that no one has heard Billy Graham firsthand. I would like to hear your thoughts, get your thoughts and and uh, uh, ideas about Billy Graham and what he was preaching when he was when he when you heard him, if you went to a Billy Graham. 
crusade. Uh, you might have answered the altar call when he gave it. But friends, was what he's saying, do you agree with what he was saying back in 1997 about uh, being able to be saved without even knowing Jesus? Or was that something that he was just, you know, rambling about? Something that he maybe didn't realize what he was saying? Well, I want you to consider this. This is from 1978. This is a quote from 1978. This is... Uh, uh, an interview that was done with Billy Graham in January 1978 with uh, James Michael Beam and this is what Billy Graham said he said I used to play God but I can't do that anymore I used to believe that pagans in far-off countries were lost were going to hell if they did not have the gospel of Jesus Christ preached to them I no longer believe that I believe that there are other ways of recognizing the existence of God through nature, for instance, and plenty of other opportunities, therefore, of saying yes to God. End quote. Now, that's, that's Billy Graham. 1978, Billy Graham says that he used to play God and that now, and that he used to believe that a person that didn't have the gospel was, was, going, to be, was going to be lost, going to go to hell. He doesn't believe that anymore. That's 1978. Now, friends, this was not what Billy Graham said to Robert Schuler was not just some ramblings of an old man. Billy Graham, when he said this, he was 60 years old. You know, we're talking about 20 years prior to what he said to Robert Schuler. So clearly, this is something he's believed for a long time. Clearly, the man that everybody praises, that everybody looks up to, the man that everybody says, hey, you know, he, he's a great man of God. Look at all the people he's influenced. Billions, millions and billions of people. Friends, he, he's, he's been a false teacher for, uh, for I, I mean, well, all his life, all his preaching career, really. But 1978, for sure. I mean, if you, if you don't want to believe that what Billy Graham was teaching before 1978 was wrong, at least let's, let's at least start with 1978. Do you believe that someone can be saved without hearing the gospel? I mean, listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says in Romans 1 and verse 16, Romans 1 and verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now Paul says the gospel is the power of God to save. Billy Graham said, I've changed my mind. I think they can be saved without the gospel. Well, who does he think he is? Well, he probably thinks he probably thinks that he is God. I find it interesting. He said he stopped playing God, but yet now he's actually saying things beyond God. He's actually saying that people can be saved without God's power to save. The power, the God's power to save is the gospel. Billy Graham says, "Well, I quit playing God, and I think that they can be saved without God's power to save." Who's really playing God now? You see what we're dealing with, friends? This is, this is why it's so very, very hard to talk to people about uh, the truth when they are so wound up, tangled up, and tied up with, with uh, praising men and looking at what people have accomplished and being so mesmerized by it that they don't stop and think, what does this man really teach? Have you ever stopped to think, what does Billy Graham really believe about the gospel and the power to save? So Paul says the gospel is the God's power to save, and Billy Graham says it's not. I mean, are you going to take God's gospel or Graham's gospel? I'll, I'll take God's. I mean, if someone can be saved without the gospel, I mean, listen again to that quote. Listen to what he says. I used to play God, but I can't anymore. I used to believe that pagans in far-off countries were lost, going to hell. And if they did not believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, preach of them. If they did not have the gospel of Jesus Christ, preach of them. I no longer believe that. Well, friends, what does, I wonder what Billy Graham would do with the Great Commission. I mean, what, what do we do with Matthew 28 and verse 19? Where Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. 
teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. What do we do with that? Jesus said, go to all the world and teach them. And Billy Graham says, mm, don't necessarily have to. Jesus said, go teach them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And Billy Graham says, not essential. I mean, what are we doing with this? Are we really, are we really elevating and praising a man who believes that you can be saved without the gospel of Christ? I mean, what's the point of even, of even having the gospel? Why even have the Bible? In, Matthew, in Mark 16, uh, 15 and 16, here's what Jesus said. This is, the, this is the last thing Jesus said to his disciples before he was send, ascended up into heaven. And he says unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, he that believeth not shall be damned. Now, Billy Graham comes along and says, Well, you don't have to go into all the world and preach the gospel because they're not going to be damned. They're not going to go to hell if you don't go. Friends, is that... Am I missing something here? Are we really... Are we really advocating the... the, the, the greatness and elevating and, and uh, uh, putting on a pedestal a man that believes that you can be saved without the gospel? I mean, what's the point of even preaching? Why did he go into all these countries and preach and preach on these crusades? Let's let I me mean, let's go back to the statistics. Let's go back to the statistics and ask yourself why why did he do this? Um, in uh, let's just look at this. As of two thousand eight, Graham's estimated lifetime audience included radio and television broadcast top two point two billion. Why? Why did he preach to two point two billion people? If he didn't need to, if they could be saved without preaching the gospel to them. Even if it was Billy Graham's gospel, why did he preach to them? There's only one there's, there's only one other reason I can think of, friends. He was making money from it. I mean, what other reason could it be if a man says you don't need to preach the gospel? Go into all the world is not necessary. People are going to be saved whether they don't hear the if they hear the gospel or not. Actually, they'll be saved. They'll be better off if they don't hear the gospel because then they can't reject it. I mean, what do we do with that, friends? Why else would a man preach to 2.2 billion people if he didn't believe that they needed to hear the gospel? I mean, be honest with you. Why would he do that? What's the point? What's the purpose of preaching the gospel to some people if you don't need to preach the gospel? And I find it interesting that he says, I, I used to play God. Friends, does that mean that we're playing God when we tell people the gospel? If he thinks that, that telling preacher, preaching the gospel to people and telling them they're lost is playing God, then what uh, you know, what what is it what does that say about us? What about all the other people out there? What about the rest of the people just say in the Southern Baptist Convention? And as I said, I you know, the folks in the Southern Baptist Convention, I would, they should burn him in effigy, I guess. You know? Can you believe, they, he just took away their whole livelihood. But friends, it's not playing God to preach the gospel. It's actually being obedient to God. God said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes in his baptized shall be saved. Now, I would say that that's, you know, that's more in line of being obedient to God than what Billy Graham's saying. And when he says this, I believe there's other ways of recognizing the existence of God through nature, for instance. Friends, is recognizing that there is a God, is that the same as being obedient to God? I mean, you can look around the world. You can look, you know, we took, we, my family and I, we took a drive up in the mountains uh, a few weeks ago. I'm beautiful. We like driving up in there. You you can, you know, see all kinds of things and the scenery is just amazing. It's amazing. God's creation, the beauty of nature, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament show forth His handiwork. Psalm 19. But does that mean that that a person is saved if they acknowledge that there's an existence of God? 
you recognize there's an existence, that God exists, does that, is that saying yes to God? Is, and is just saying yes to God, is that good enough to be saved? Is that all you have to do? Apparently to the man that everybody lauds and applauds, to everyone that, to the man that everyone is, you know, building statues to and uh, statues to and and uh, elevating up on a pedestal. Apparently, that's all you need to do. But again, why? Jesus said, "Go." Billy said, "No." Friends, if people don't need to be taught about God to come to Him, then Jesus was wrong. What Billy Graham is saying is actually is actually wrong. It's actually contradicting what Jesus said. Listen, in John chapter 6, John 6 and verse 44, now most, a lot of people know this verse, but they don't know the next verse. But John 6 verse 44, and I hope that you're writing some of these scriptures down. I hope you're, you're listening at home and you're, you're taking notes or whatever. But in John 6 and verse 44, Jesus said, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. And I will raise him up in the last day. Now, Billy Graham says that you don't even have to know Jesus. You don't have to know God. You can actually be drawn to God and not even know it. I guess it's like one of those Star, Star Trek you know, tractor beams. It just sucks you in and there's nothing you can do about it. But friends, how is a person drawn to God? And that's really the question we have to ask. How is a person drawn to God? The very next verse, John 6 and verse 45. Jesus said, no man can come to the Father, or no man can come to me except my, my Father, which hath sent me, draw him, and I'll raise him up in the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Now Billy Graham says, no, you can come to the Father even if you haven't heard, and if you haven't learned, you can still get to the Father. Friends, I, I, I mean, what do you do with that? Are you going to take Jesus or are you going to take Billy? I'll, I'll take Jesus. If Jesus says that the way you get to the Father is by hearing and by learning, or the way you come to Christ is by hearing and learning, then friends, I, I want to say that Billy was wrong. And I'm not playing God when I say that. I'm just telling you the truth. If a man says you don't need to hear and you learn, you still come to God, and Jesus says no, you have to hear and you have to learn in order in order to come, then Billy Graham's wrong. But yet, we're praising Billy Graham. 99 years old, friends. I'd be scared to death to be 99 years old and have had an audience of 2.2 billion people and all the time, I believe that none of those people have to hear what I have to say to be saved. I'd be scared to death to be in Billy Graham's shoes. I'd be afraid he's going to choke on his cake. His, his family said that his, his birthday, for his birthday they're going to have his favorite lemon cake with lard icing. That's his, that's his favorite. Lemon cake with lard icing. Now friends, I'd be afraid I'd choke on my cake. I'd be, I'd be afraid to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, which we're all going to do, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10, knowing that I believed that people can get to heaven without even being told about Christ. And I told 2.2 billion people that. That would scare me to death. I don't know what the, what the population of the world is. I shouldn't, I don't know, it's what, billion, billions of people? Uh, I don't know what percentage that would be. But, I mean, you think about this, friends. Here's a man of great power, influence, and you're, you're talking to 2.2 billion people, all right? The, the population of the world is 7.6 billion. Wow. Wow. A third. Billy Graham has preached to a third of the world. That's rough, roughly. A little bit, little bit less than a third, I guess. Now, you think about that, friends. 
you, you, you've talked to a third of the world and you're not even telling them what they need to hear? You don't even believe they need to hear about Jesus? Friends, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be praising Billy Graham. If I, and if I were you and you sent money to Billy Graham, I'd, want my, I'd give my money back. And like I said, if you're in the Southern Baptist Convention, I'd, I'd wonder why he's still in there. Why is, he, why is he even associated? Why is anybody sending him any money? Friends, this, 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 man's, this man's a heretic. Now, I'm not trying to be mean or cruel, but I'm just saying, let's look at the facts. Let's look at the facts. And you say, well, James, wh wh why point this out? Wh what's the, wh what, what, are you, what are you doing this for? You know, before I answer that, I want you to listen to this. Um, a while back, this is just a couple months ago, I went and talked to a Baptist preacher in Eden, Benny Wood, preacher for the Tri-City Baptist Church. And this is what I asked him. This is a question I asked him. And this is what he said. And I'm, I'm going to play this because I want you to hear what someone said to me after they, they heard this. Listen, listen to what he said. This is Benny Wood, preacher for the Tri-City Baptist Church. Yeah, James Oldfield. James who? Oldfield. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, hey, yeah how you doing? I'm all right. Hey, listen. We are, we're out doing a little door knocking. Uh -huh. And uh, I thought I'm going to come out here and see you. Uh, one of our members, neighbors, uh, said you're out visiting them. And he asked about, uh, maybe you could find, I think he said the, maybe the, the sinner's prayer in the Bible. And... And he said you wouldn't give my answer, and I, I just didn't know if you could, maybe didn't have the time to do that then, or could you sit down and have a Bible study with us? We're trying to find. No, sir, I can't have a Bible study with you. You can't? No, sir. You won't ever? I'm not here to argue about the Bible, okay? Well, I said study. I never said. I know what you said. I never said anything about not being able to find the sinner's prayer. But you can't. I didn't say I could. So you can or you can't. Well, I don't know about that. I don't think it's exactly in there, but it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that's a, but that's a person who's unsaved and knows they're unsaved. Okay. Because they're going to die in the hell and they want to be saved. And so therefore they cry to the Lord. It don't, okay. It's not written as I know of exactly. Okay. So, but, but calling on the name of the Lord, is that is that praying? Because the Bible also says mm -hmm. that God doesn't hear a sinner's prayer. Uh -huh. You know, so how is it that... If God doesn't hear a sinner's prayer, how is he going to hear a sinner pray and ask for forgiveness? <laughs> you sure are confused, aren't you? No, I'm not confused. You are. No? I thank you, sir. I appreciate you coming. Okay. So you, so you can't find it or you won't find it? Sinner's prayer. I'm not going to answer you, okay? Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. So he can't find it, won't find it, either way. Now, the reason I play that, friends, is because that was a Baptist preacher. And this is what I want you to consider. Here's what uh, someone commented and said to me regarding this. It says James, why do you hope to what do you hope to accomplish in this? This man is clearly set in his ways and in his understanding. He is hard packed soil. Wouldn't your time be better spent trying to reach those that are receptive to learning, cultivating good soil? And uh, he just says, I think your talents are wasted in your approach. The denominational world doesn't want to change. But some lost alien sinner who has never been taught may secretly be begging to hear the gospel uh, with your understanding uh, what it means to obey the gospel. Now, my friends, I appreciate the man commenting, but here's here's the fact of the matter. For a man to say that he's this is a man's hard packed soil and I should be I'd be better served talking to someone else, well, what if the next person I hear is the hard packed soul? Or the next person I talk to? is hard-packed soil, as he says. The denominational world doesn't want to change? Well, you just told me this man doesn't want to change, but I should go find someone else in the denomination? But here is the real reason why we do this. Same reason why Jesus did it. Why would you, why would you talk about preachers like Billy Graham or Benny Woods or whatever? I mean, why, 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 why uh, mess with that? Here's why. Because, friends, Jesus exposed religious leaders. He exposed religious leaders so that the people uh, could see who they were really following. 
He exposed what they taught, what they practiced, so that the people who were following these, these individuals, who were being taught by these individuals, could see, hey, these guys are not doing what God said. I mean, look, look again. In Matthew chapter 15, Matthew chapter 15, what does Jesus do? The scribe said, why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? And Jesus said, why do you transgress the commandment, uh, uh, why do you transgress the commandment of God? With your tradition. See, he just turned it right back around on them. And then he goes through and shows how they, they uh, negated or they made the commandment of God of none effect. Uh, verse, uh, verse 9, in vain they worship me, teaching for doctrines and commandments of men. And then his disciples said, Know you not that they were offended at the saying? And he said, Let them, the blind be blind. Let them alone. Uh, they be blind leaders of the blind. And the blind lead the blind. They both shall fall in the ditch. Now, this is just one example. Jesus was exposing what they were teaching. He was showing how they were, they were really uh, frauds, if you will. In Matthew 23, Jesus spake to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. And he goes on to say, They bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders, and they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men, they make broad their phylacteries and large borders their garments. And now, let's come on down. In verse 13, Jesus starts saying, he starts talking to them. He says, but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. He, he's talking to the multitudes about what these people are doing right to these people. And I'm saying, friends, the reason why we do what we do is because it's the same thing. If I can help people see that the people that they're following do not have their best interest in mind, if I can help them to see that the people that they're following and believing in are not really telling them the truth, I'm doing them a great service. I'm really, do, I'm really doing them a favor. See this? If you point out, if you point out that uh, the person that, that someone's following is really a fraud, don't you really help them? I mean, let's look at this. In Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 8, you have a man named Philip going down to Samaria, and he preached Christ unto them. That's what verse 5 says. Acts 8 and verse 5. And the people one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Now look at verse 9. And there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard because that for a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. So the people didn't know. They couldn't tell. They really couldn't tell the difference until the truth came along. But when the truth came along, when Philip came along and was really doing the power of God, look at verse, verse 12. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. I mean, they, they, they ran away from Simon the sorcerer. I mean, here he's, I'm a great man of God. Look at what I'm doing. And they said, oh, he, he's, he's great. But when they saw the truth, when they saw the truth of the matter, then it was a whole different story. Simon was, I mean, he, he wasn't anything. And friends, that's really what it ought to be like. When we're showing what people say and what they do, what they teach, like Billy Graham or Benny Woods or anybody like that, what we're doing is, I mean, it'd be nice if they changed. But the real goal is to get the people who are following to stop and say, why are we supporting this guy? Why are we following this guy? See, that, that's really the whole goal. And so that's what Jesus did. Jesus came along and started teaching, and the Bible says that they were... They were amazed, they were astonished at his doctrine. In uh, uh, Matthew chapter 7, in verse 28, 
The Bible says it came to pass when he had ended these things, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not the scribes. That's really, that's really the whole goal of this, is to help people realize, who have you been following? What have you been listening to? Who have you been obeying? Who have you been uh, taking their word that this is something that God said, when in reality you haven't stopped to check the Bible out? I mean, like I said, if you've been following Billy Graham, well, at least since 1978, Billy Graham decided that uh, you know preaching the gospel was really not necessary, but he sure kept on preaching. Now, you have to ask why. You have to ask why. Our folks were running on the last last uh, downside of the hour. If you'd like to be part of the program, 336-427-9696-427-WMYN or 627-9563-627-WLOE. Be part of the program. And again, I'd like to hear someone who has heard Billy Graham firsthand. I'm, uh, he hasn't been preaching... Uh, Lately, just because of his health, but still, you know, I'd like to know what, what your perception or what your uh, perspective was or your perception of, of Billy Graham. So, so why point this out? Well, friends, the bottom line is, is because the Bible says, don't think of men above that which is written. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6, 1 Corinthians 4 in verse 6, listen to what Paul says. Now, in the context, you have to realize the context. Paul is talking to a group of people that they, they, they were following people. I mean, back in chapter 1, he said, you know, there's a group of you saying, I'm of Paul, and I'm of Cephas, I'm of Apollos, and I'm of Christ. I mean, they were all divided because of who they were following. Today, you say, well, I'm of, I'm of Benny, or I'm of Billy, or I'm of whoever. Well, don't do that. And here's what Paul said. Paul said, these things, brethren, I have, trans I have in a figure transferred to myself and Apollos for your sakes. He could have pointed out who they were, who these people were that were dividing all these people or who the ringleaders were, but he said, I just for the sake of, of explanation, I'm going to just use my, Apollos and myself as an, as an example. He said, but I, I, I've transferred this to myself to Apollos for your sakes that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. Don't think of men above that which is written. Friends, is that what the religious world does? Isn't that exactly what the religious world does? I mean, again, driving down the road and I see signs in the, 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 the churchyards out in front of these church buildings. Billy Graham Sunday. That on itself ought to make you stop and think, well, who is Billy Graham that we get to celebrate him? But you know what? That's really no, not a real big surprise. Last month, you had Pastor Appreciation Month. I'm going going down the road up here, and I see you know signs up here about Woodbriar uh, uh, Baptist Church. You're going to peer across the, across the, um, the river, and... Here in, in Madison, Maidan, at Pastor Appreciation, Pastor Appreciation. In Eden, going to see all the marquees, Pastor Appreciation, Pastor Appreciation. <coughs> well, who, who are they? Who are they that you're elevating them and putting them on a pedestal? Are you thinking about men above that which is written? Now, that's, that's what we're talking about, friends. You see? But if I can show you where a man is not telling you the truth... If you love the truth, you would you would stop following him and start following the Bible. I mean, you ought to be considering. You ought to be considering. Am I listening to this man because of his popularity, or am I listening to the man because he's telling the truth? Jesus said, Saint, "Jesus said, sanctify them with thy truth. Thy word is truth." John seventeen seventeen, and it's your job and your responsibility. To make sure that what people are saying is the truth. I mean, it'd be like the Bereans. Examine it. Check it out. Find find in the in the scripture. Is it is it really true? I don't ask you to take my word for anything. I'm asking you to seriously consider is what I'm saying truth. 
That's why I'm telling you, you get a pen and paper, you write this down, you check it out, <clears throat> you see if what I'm saying is lined up with the scripture. I don't ask you to take my word for anything. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm asking you to, you know, examine what's being said. So, where'd we start? We started with Billy Graham. We started with a man that everybody praised, everybody loves, everybody is, you know, just falling head over heels for. But in reality, friends, he's not telling you the truth. Now, here's the question. Is the man you're listening to every Sunday, the man that you're that you're listening to, and, and you say, well, he's a, he's a great preacher. He preached out of the Bible. Well, friends, I can assure you one thing. If he's preaching a denominational church, he's not preaching that out of the Bible. He got that from somewhere else. He, you have to get that from somewhere else because it's not in the Bible. This is why we're saying a $1,000 reward. A $1,000 to the person who can find the Baptist church, the Methodist church, the Lutheran church, the Presbyterian church. That's, that's not... That's not designed to get you your ire up, you know, to get your dander up, to get you mad. That's designed to provoke you to study. Now, it may make you mad. I've talked to a lot of people who said, you know, when I first heard you, I got mad. But you know what? When you start listening to the truth, you, you'll get happy. If you'll put aside all those feelings, well, you know, you're talking about my preacher. How about we're talking about the truth? I'm not talking about your preacher. I'm talking about what does your preacher preach? I'm talking about what is the truth. What have you what have you been been taught? Because it doesn't matter who you are. I mean, you can be Billy Graham. You know, you can be, you know, Bob Smith. I don't know who you are, but I'm saying if you're not teaching the truth, you're gonna be right there with Billy Graham. And I would not want to stand before God on Judgment Day, give me account for what I've been teaching, and can't find it in the Bible. And I'd hate to stand before God on Judgment Day and can't find what I was listening to in the Bible and then have to tell God, well, you know, I didn't check him out. I just, I just assumed he was telling me the truth. Friends, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Don't, don't spend eternity. Don't spend eternity lost because you didn't take time when you had time to check out what someone's saying. Just don't do that, friend. Don't do that. I mean, you say, well, I don't have a time. Well, when, you, when you're in eternity, you're not going to have any time either. There won't be any time. So, take the time now. If Billy Graham has been wrong, who else could be wrong? The great Billy Graham, if Billy Graham has been wrong all this time, maybe, you've been, maybe the person you're listening to has not been telling you the truth. Check it out, friends. If you want to check us out, you're more than welcome to. We meet at 250 the Boulevard, the Church of Christ. We meet at 250 the Boulevard in Eden, North Carolina. You're welcome to come and visit with us. We meet Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible class, 10 a.m. for worship, 7 p.m. for Bible study on Thursday nights. If you want to uh, call me, 276-340-2653, or you can reach me at a word from Lord at gmail.com. Friends, this, this, the phone lines are open. I mean, there's so many ways that we offer people that we allow people to, to examine us, to question us. I mean, we got live TV programs, live radio programs. You can come to our Bible studies. We open up the, up the floor. I mean, you can ask us all kinds of questions. But you talk to some of these other people that are supposed to be preachers, and they won't let you ask a question. So you just stop and think, well, who's really concerned about my well-being here? Your friends in the Church of Christ, they're concerned about you. Friends, uh, I'm, I'm running out of time. I'm, I think I'm down to about a minute. So I'm going to tell you again, uh, 250 the Boulevard is where we meet. And my name is James Oldfield. And this is a word from the Lord. And I hope that you'll continue listening to the program. Uh, Sunday's at 5 p.m. If you're in your car, maybe you have to go somewhere, download the app, the rcr24.com, uh, Rockingham County Radio app. On your smartphone, your iPad, whatever. I mean, there's all kinds of new phones and gadgets coming out, and you can listen to it on the go. Uh, we'll put this up on YouTube as well, so we're trying to, uh, you know, get this out to you how we can. So we want you to take advantage of that, friends.